Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin on Monday, July 18th, 2016. And when last we left off, I was showing you how I was integrating with Google Spreadsheets through Jupyter Notebooks using my GoodSheet package from GitHub. So with that in hand, uh, you can simply uh, connect to uh, Google Spreadsheets and various other services as I just did and uh, pull data out of a spreadsheet. So here's my spreadsheet that I had uh, set up before uh, from a, a small crawl that I did of my site. And uh, if I go ahead and uh, execute this, I now have a list of lists in memory and I'm accessing uh, index one of it, which is uh, the first column here. So when I execute that, you will see uh, my URLs. And if I wanted every row, I just get rid of the index, execute that, and there it is. And in um, pipulate uh, nomenclature or parlance or whatever, uh, when you have a uh, header column that has uh, uh, two values filled in, and then every subsequent row only has one of the values filled in, and then you have blanks underneath that line up with a, a title like that. Well, what it's really asking is to take the value found here, to feed it into a function named here, and to plug the output value here. And that's just the pipulate convention. And even though I'm showing you about a package called Happy Sheet or Good Sheet, I'm going back and forth on the name, uh, what it really is about is about the pipulate uh, functions that you can apply uh, on a uh, row by row basis to do these uh, fast lookups like grabbing page authority off over a bunch of URLs or grabbing content off the URL itself or doing lookups against uh, social services to get Facebook likes or whatever. And uh, to make a nice generic way of doing that, adding as little overhead here as possible. And I'm aware that what I'm doing is making yet another framework, which I usually don't like because Python itself is a framework, but let's face it, every public uh, third party package is in a way uh, its own sort of framework, making uh, your work easier by uh, adding new capabilities and new abstraction levels anyway. Um, what I've learned, or actually knew from various other times I've implemented this, is that even though a list of lists, grabbing back a list of lists from the worksheet, is really wonderful for being sitting on top of the values where you know, each list in your list of lists represents a row, and it visualizes really great here, it's not really what we want or need because the GSpread uh, API uh, for uh, updating, back, updating back to a spreadsheet in batch really requires a range. Okay, so you select your cell list by range. You'll recall from my earlier tutorials, I thought I was going to have to get this by myself, but as you'll see in a moment, I won't. But here's batch. When you want to update in batch, you take your worksheet object and you just call it update cells. And you feed it your cell list, which you had just pulled out with a very similar query using a range. So it couldn't be simpler. Uh, bottom line is that we really have to change from this list of list selections that uses the get all value methods uh, to uh, selecting with a range. So I'm going to show you some before and after. I actually already did this work. Restart and clear all outputs. And now I'll make a copy of it. And now that I have a copy, I'm going to just jump over here and uh, do a git pull. Because I did all the work already. Have to stash it first. But now I do a pull. And I've got my new version here. Which I'm pretty sure it's going to warn me about when I jump over here. No? Okay, I'll do a refresh. So that's the new version. This is the older version. Okay, so as the old version selected a list of lists. This new version is going to say cell range equals. And I do A2 
I could probably just as well do A1, but I'm going to do, yeah, I'll do A1, get the whole rectangular region. And now my end range, you can see I edited out the get all values, and I needed to get an end range because it's A1, which is the upper left cell, right? Obviously A1. Okay, but what is this uh, lower right? Well, we can see it's B37, but in order to get that here, we actually do this uh, little selection right here, end range equals. And I can really hit that home by just copying these out. Whoops. Edit base cells above. Okay, I uh, was over exuberant. Worksheet equals and range equals. And then the uh, the cell range. But if I just do this, and then print the end range. Oh. Of course, I got to execute the first one, execute the second one. There it is, B37, right? So now with B37 in hand, I can select from A1 to B37. Instead of the lists of lists, I can be sitting on top of a cell range. So I execute that one. Okay, I'm sitting on top of it. You can see here was the old command for A line in and I used uh, generator expressions. It was probably, well, definitely was unnecessary in this case. So that could have, would have been better expressed for just a line in that. No reason to do something that is similar to nest of loops. But I fixed it here uh, for a cell in cell range, print. And I'm doing the value to give you a, a rough approximation of, of what we saw here. So. When we did this, I'm printing a line per here, right? From a list of lists object. When we do it on the new version, I'm printing, well, let me just print the cell, the whole cell in each case without doing this, uh, this string stuff. For a cell in cell range, print a cell. See as close as possible to what it is. You've got these pointy brackets. Uh, here is the uh, first row, row one, column one, URL, row one, column two, page auth, and then row two, column one, and so on. So this is row two, this is row three. And now I guess one of the interesting things of this uh, tutorial is to teach you a little bit more about what these pointy brackets are, how that is the the representation or the string representation that a, a developer explicitly feeds back. Where does this come from? And what do we have that we can do on each one of these rows? Well, instead of printing the cell, I could actually uh, print other things like type. Let's see what that is. What is a cell type from GSpread? Hmm, it's a class type object from GSpread, from something called modules, from something called cell. Well, we just happen to be over in the GitHub uh, repository here. And do we uh, see something called GSpread there? Well, yes, yes we do. Do we see something called models? Well, yes. And inside models, do we see a class Name cell. Oh, there it is. Pretty exciting. So what can you do with a cell object? Now I could have done other things like uh, dir or help around the cell object instead of just type and be looking at this in location in Jupyter Notebook. But why not come and look at the latest source? You know, when you talk about looking at source, there's almost nothing you can't tell. So there's a class object, and this is what uh, happens when a new instance of that class object is made. So when you're saying a new cell, it goes through this, and it's going to have a, uh, a bunch of properties by default. It's going to have a value, 
Oh, and look, some, uh, some functions that have decorators. A decorator called property, and that property has something uh, called uh, row and col. So, is it reasonable to assume that on each iteration through here, that the object, a cell, is going to have a property such as row? Well, of course it will. And col? Well, there's our columns. And value. Now you'll notice the lack of parentheses uh, after value because we're not executing code, we're just accessing the value of a property. If I were to actually have put in those parentheses, it would create an error. String object is not callable, easy enough to read. When it says is not callable, that means you put a parenthesis somewhere where you shouldn't. And you can see what kind of thing you did it on. Oh, a string object. Well, a cell dot value is a string object. But what about those spaces that occur underneath of it? What's happening there? Well, let's just switch to string formatting and say cell, oh, value, because we're showing the value, is this for each cell. Aha, uh -huh. we do in fact get cell value and then we get a blank and those are those blanks. And if you wanted to, you know, further confirm it, you could say, you know, uh, row percent s call percent s and then you just throw in uh, those in here now <clears throat> has to then become a tuple if it's more than one a cell dot row a cell dot val Nope, call. And then a cell dot value. <clears throat> Excuse me. Row one, column one, row one, column two, and so on. So you can see how you have wonderful control over it. Oh, but what is this thing lurking down here? Well, let's look at that. This buys us really nothing due to it just printing. So we'll get rid of that output and focus on this last one for a second. Oh, wait, we're spinning through a cell. We're spinning through the cell range just like we did before. But in this time, in this case, if not a cell dot value, in other words, that's saying in other, any, any other language that would be like is not empty or something like that. But in Python, it's this wonderfully concise uh, if not, which is a test for empty and, you know, anything that evaluates to false which is those empty cells. And we'll set it to bar, right? Because foo bar, right? It's an output, so let's make it bar. And uh, you'll see this last line edited out. So let's do a before and after, right? So I will add a cell here and I will output that cell range. So you can see blanks. There's always a blank there. I'll move that down below this guy here that we want to execute. It has no output, so it will be empty. But we're now down to this here. When I say it'll be empty, I mean it just doesn't show output. But when I re-execute this, watch these blank cells. Every other row is a blank on the output bar, 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 and etc. all the way down. I set the values to bar. But this last line is still commented out. So if we go to Google Spreadsheets, nothing here, nothing in this cell. And now let's break out this guy here and put it uh, here, put this one here, so that I can do a glorious before and after. So it's displayed right there. And we go to our uh, new file 
And you know, that's a little noisy, so we'll cut that out. We don't need to see that anymore. But what is of interest now is executing this line. Worksheet.update up, that's behind my head, isn't it? Let's move it over here. You've got no size restrictions going on here. I can just put it here, make it so that you can see it. Worksheet.update underscore cells, cell range. Ready, set, go. Bar, all the way down, simple as that. And of course the plan now is, instead of is not a cell dot value, set it to bar, we're gonna be taking the values from here, feeding it into a function called this, and outputting it there, and then updating it all in just that one batch update that this represents. Pipulate 2.0 or Pipulate 3.0 if you prefer so that I keep the three of Pipulate in sync with the three of Python. And as you can see, as this comes together, how incredibly less code this is than prior versions of Pipulate and how I lean so heavily on the Jupyter Notebook UI the way I used to lean on the Google Spreadsheet UI and the use of bookmarklets, which while it was a winning combo for its day for the past you know, uh, five years or so I was using this technique, now that Jupyter Notebook is on the scene and so mature, it makes sense to make Google Spreadsheets, as much as it's integral in demos like this, still nonetheless optional, one of the various techniques you can use and this line I'm uh, getting rid of here is, you know, I no longer want to teach people to do this with a list of lists. No, no, it is now all about a, um, a range selection. So that is a combination of these lines here. You need, these need to be uh, part of what we remind people to do every time because uh, oh, oh, that's already done, that one. We always need to find that end range. And after finding the end range, we always need to make that rectangular selection, at least when we're using uh, the Google Spreadsheet way of doing Pipulate. So, um, yeah, that pretty much ends it there. Uh, this is going to be a uh, much improved process. And on my future videos, I will be switching back and forth between uh, generic uh, Python tutorial stuff, Python 3 in Jupyter Notebook through your basic, you know, class, uh, your basic uh, uh, core Python objects, which are so important, and the modifications that I'm making so that I can do the kind of day-to-day -day SEO investigations uh, enormously fast uh, using wonderful things for I.O. like Google Spreadsheets. Uh, through packages I'm making and making available through GitHub uh, and documenting for the rest of the world how we're going to do this stuff. Um, so if you are a part of my audience following along in, in Pipulate, this is where I'm at now. Going from Python 2.7 to 3.5, going from using the Pipulate package in the GitHub repo to using the GoodSheet package uh, for now, until I uh, catch up and fill uh, the uh, good sheet repo with all those rich pipulate functions that exist that are essentially uh, completely compatible with this new direction. Uh, and it's a satisfying new direction because your upfront and personal exposure to uh, Python is going to be that much greater. And at the end of the day, that's really what this is all about. We're about to get into things like, oh, did I close that spreadsheet. Well, the page auth that was in the spreadsheet, uh, creating all kinds of functions that are going to fill in the uh, output values uh, of spreadsheets and CSVs whenever you articulate a uh, pipulate job request and send it to this system. So that was today's tutorial. I hope it was as fun for you as it was for me and uh, hope to see you again soon. And of course, as usual, don't forget to thumb up the video and subscribe.